1848. If it's in the 19th century, 1848 is always a good guess. If it's in the, the 20th century, 1968 is a good guess. So there's just years in our history where everything happens. 1848 is one of those years. So they go, and they women's suffrage is at the, the front of their minds. What can we do to get women's suffrage? But then they see it linked to everything else. They actually wrote a, a Declaration of Sentiments. If you've read it, it's based on the Declaration of Independence. It's mimicking the language to be very pointed about it. Here are the rights that we fought for. Here are the rights that were being denied. Do we see the hypocrisies of all of this? Women's suffrage remained, the fight for women's suffrage remained strong in the 1850s, but then the Civil War hits. And the nation's attention is very much distracted. And women who had been involved in the suffrage movement, since many of them had gotten their start in the abolitionist movement, they throw their energy behind the war that's going to end slavery. And at the end of the war, we get some great things. We end slavery. We get the 14th and 15th Amendment about citizenship and suffrage. And then women kind of take a step back and say, oh, let's, let's read that 14th Amendment a little bit more closely. And they see that this is the first time where the word male, I'm going to have to get next one more time, sorry, is spelled out, I'll go back, explicitly in this. It had been hinted about, most people kind of assume, but this is the first time that we're seeing it. And women who had fought in slavery, who had been told that those two struggles were linked. Uh-oh. I know. Oh my God. Okay, I'm going to, that's all right. If that's the worst thing that happens, we're going. This is not my computer, so give me one second. Uh, don't look at these pictures yet. We're not there. <laughs> That's all right. Divides the, the women's suffrage movement because about half the women who supported it said we can't throw our support behind the 14th and 15th amendments because it excludes women. The other half said, yeah, but it's a step in the right direction. We've got to see what we can get. Uh, Stanton and her good friend Susan B. Anthony said that they would not support it. They wanted it to be equal rights for everyone. Other people joined in. So Sojourner Truth said in an 1867 Equal Rights Association. Why aren't we paying attention to, sorry, no. yep, why aren't we paying attention to women? Why are we only talking about recently freed black men? Everyone's rights should matter. And the suffrage movement splits on a few other um, ways too, so it splits into a couple different groups. Stanton and Anthony believe that a federal amendment is going to be the way to, to solve the issues if we get the, an amendment to the Constitution. Other women say that's not going to work. We need to go state by state. So they split on that too. So half the movement about starts to, to try for the state by state campaign, to try to get individual states this isn't work, this way, to, to fight for suffrage. You can see it's semi-successful, especially out the West. We did much better out here. Not so great back east. And it's in fits and starts in the West, too. There's a lot of delays between different states. And so Susan B. Anthony says, this isn't the way to do it. We need to, go ahead, sorry. We need to get more attention. I wasn't going to make it through suffrage without talking about Susan B. Anthony. Um, she's still fighting for a federal amendment. It doesn't make her popular with everyone. She and some of her supporters start uh, a women's suffrage newspaper called The Revolution. And if you, I'm going to have you hit it a couple times. On their masthead, it actually spelled out what they wanted. Hit next one more time. I'm assuming you can't read that teeny tiny writing. Men their rights and nothing more. Women their rights and nothing less. There's this perception, and there always has been, the history of humankind, that civil rights are a zero-sum game. That if someone gets rights, Someone else has to lose rights to make it balance out. It's absolutely incorrect. We always know this, but we don't apparently always know this. So they want to make that really clear. Women getting the right to vote as citizens isn't going to take rights away from anyone else. Anthony decides to put her 
uh, put everything into action for us. She goes ahead and she tries to vote in 1872. She's actually successful at it, and then a few weeks later she's arrested. There was something weird going on, some bizarro laws. She was arrested for it. The whole trial is a farce. The judge was pretty confident from the beginning that she was going to be found guilty. He actually kept saying that. I'm pretty sure you can't do that during a trial, but he did it. And she just kept fighting for it. I want you to look at how she's being depicted in this as well. In this political cartoon, they're trying to be condescending. They're trying to make her look a little too masculine, a little angry, a little bit silly in all of this. And she just kept fighting for it. The 1870s weren't the best time to be a suffrage supporter, because then the Supreme Court rules in a few cases, too. The most notable is in 1875 with Minor versus Happersett. This challenged the idea that the women could not vote. The Supreme Court ruled, though, that suffrage was not an automatic right of citizenship, that those are separate and they needed to be separated out. And it was specifically paying attention to how women worked in with the 14th Amendment. And the court told women, you know, suffrage is really a privilege for you. It's a right that only the federal government can bestow. It's like this magical gift. It's not something that you just automatically get by virtue of being a citizen. Huge setback. And there are so many people who didn't support women's suffrage. And I'm just going to kind of go through these a little bit quickly if you look through the anti-suffrage posters. For how women who fight for suffrage are being depicted, if you're told your whole life your job is to get married and have babies, this is going to dissuade you. Who wants to be one of these? Women who've never been kissed, well then why are they doing it? They're fighting for suffrage because they have nothing else in their lives. This is something meant to, to keep women away from the suffrage movement. This is one of my favorite. Which do you prefer? The lovely mother cuddling her baby? Or the woman on the street corner? So there's a lot going on with that word choice there. And then how she's being depicted too. The next one, this is actually a British one, but I love it, so. Um, what is a suffragette without a suffering household? Here she is, she's off to fight for women's rights, leaving her poor husband home to take care of the kids, which is where mine is for half of our household tonight. <laughs> um, look at, she's ruining the household, she's ruining the home, she's ruining the family with all of this. My wife joined the movement and I've suffered ever since. So, and he's wearing a frilly apron, he's cleaning, oh my god, it's going to cause anarchy in every possible way. If women get the right to vote, it's going to ruin everything, it's going to emasculate men. Um, these are pretty persuasive, and this is why it's not gaining traction. Once we hit about the turn of the century, things really slowed down for the state-by-state -state campaign. It wasn't working, especially back east. Gender roles were being more rigidly conformed to back east, not that it was amazingly great in the West, but a little bit better. Women then figure out maybe having divided movement is going to be the most helpful. So the two splits in the women's suffrage movement, they decide to rejoin their forces. They form Nassau to, to bring everything together. Stanton and Anthony are two of the original leaders for Nassau. Uh, they both pass away pretty early in the 20th century. The leadership goes to, to other women like Carrie Chapman Catt who believed that the state-by-state -state campaign was still the best way. Anthony and Stanton still believed in the federal amendment, but when they, when they um, pass away, it goes back to the state-by-state. -state. Up ahead. 